Hello friends, welcome back to the video series on saluting women in history. Jahanara Begum. She was the favorite daughter of Shah Jahan and was very well versed in the state craft. She is popularly called as the architect of Chandni Chauk. A highly educated and skilled in diplomatic dealings, her word became so powerful. Jahanara Begum was a writer, poet, painter and the creator of Delhi's iconic Chandni Chauk. She also owned a ship and traded as an independent entity. Jahanara Begum also wrote many books including a biography of Ajmer's Sufi saint Khwaja Mainuddin Chisti displaying her flair for prose. Jahanara's resting place in the Nizamuddin Dargah is of her own choosing just like her character. Roshanara Begum, the power corridor of the Mughals, was the daughter of Emperor Shah Jahan and his favorite wife Mumtaz Mahal. She was a Mughal princess who saved Aurangzeb's life during the plot. The Mughal Empire's first woman title Padsha Begum was given to Roshanara Begum. She is a clever woman with a strong independent mind and was also a good poetess. Roshanara was also granted the right to issue nishans and was also appointed as a mansabdar. She was a lover of arts and music. She never married and was expected to have held significant political authority during her lifetime. Dilras Banu Begum was the first wife and chief consort of Emperor Aurangzeb, the last of the great Mughal emperors. She is also known by her posthumous title Rabia Uddaurani. She had great power over her husband Emperor Aurangzeb and his harem. The Bibi Ka Makbara in Aurangabad, which resembles the Taj Mahal, was commissioned by her husband to serve as her ultimate resting place. She was one of the high-ranking individuals in the Mughal court. Zinat Nisa Begum, popularly called as the jewel among women, was the daughter of Aurangzeb and he conferred on her with the honorable title Badshah Begum. Zinat Nisa had in-depth knowledge of the doctrines of Islam and was educated by the scholars. She chose to remain single for her entire life and was a sole companion of her father. She was known to have built 14 caravan sarais. She also had the Zinatul Masjid constructed at her expense in Delhi. Zaibu Nisa Begum. She was Aurangzeb's favorite daughter and it was because of this she could compel him to pardon people who had offended him. She was the beauty of womankind and seems to have inherited her father's keenness of intellect and literary taste. Zaibu Nisa Begum learned the sciences of the time as well. She was a kind-hearted person and always helped people in need. She also took an interest in music and it was said that she was the best singer among the women of her times. Zaibu Nisa Begum encouraged compilations and translations of various works as well. Jahan Zeb Banu Begum. She was the daughter of Dara Shuko and the chief consort of Mohammad Azam Shah. Under Jahanara Begum, she grew up to be a remarkably beautiful and cultured princess. Jahan Zeb Banu Begum led her husband's military contingents when the prince was forced to move ahead on an urgent summons from his father Aurangzeb. Jahan Seb Banu Begum is said to have personally handed out spheres and pan and promised to commit suicide if the Mughal army was overrun. She went into the battle in 1685 when Azam's forces had lost all hope during the invasion of Bijapur. Jahan Seb Banu Begum is considered to be the most beautiful and courageous woman of the Mughal Empire. Badshah Begum she was the chief consort of the Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah. Popularly known by her title Malika Uz Zamani, she was a well-educated, intelligent and had been inducted in the nuances of the ruling and diplomacy. She had commissioned mansions in Jammu in typical Mughal style and laid the foundations of pleasure gardens on the banks of the Tavi River as a Dawagras Empress even after the death of Emperor. She was considered to be the queen of the age.
According to the historical accounts, Mughal emperors put a lot of effort into encouraging female literacy and there was a strong emphasis on free education and educational freedom. Some women chose to pursue religious education while others chose to promote the arts and culture by working as teachers, poets and writers as well. The pinnacle of knowledge and culture, however, belonged to the royal women of the Mughals. And they were the fine examples of women in Mughal India who were learned, cultured and contributed a lot to the functioning of the Mughal Empire. Although these women belonged to one family, they were highly evolved individuals both intellectually and culturally which has allowed them to be remembered as more than the Mughal emperor's wives and daughters. Each woman is admired for her distinctive personality and unmatched brilliance, despite being knowledgeable in a variety of disciplines and areas of specialization. They took part in the Mughal family and society in multiple ways while performing different jobs. They were warriors and advisors in political matters and some women could own land and do business as well. They used their privilege, upbringing and vast knowledge to leave a significant impact on the history of the Mughal Empire. Their decisions, texts and patronage have allowed Mughal history to remain accessible for the coming generations. With all these facts highlighted, these powerful Mughal women ought to be given a big salute in history. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video with another important topic.